ahead, Ben. Go ahead. Yeah, we've got an issue. Can you bump your engine back to the starting place? Affirmative, we're sending the engine back, uh, the main pickup. Do you need uh, me to be with it? Over. Yeah, whatever you got. It jumps the ionization up the hill behind us. Roger, we're on our way. John, come on up to me. Amy, blow it up! Welcome to this workshop on fire guards. We're going to be covering the use and construction of fire guards during the next several videos. This particular workshop is geared towards landowners and land managers and grassland systems, particularly the tall grass prairie, but it would work for any grassland system. As you get more brush and more woodies into your systems, these tips and techniques will become less and less effective. Fire guards really are a tool that allows you to control fires. They are probably one of the most important tools you have. One of the benefits of them is you can construct them months in advance, work out all the kinks, work out all the problems, so that on burn day you really have a tool that's working for you. Keep in mind the difference between a wildfire and a controlled fire really is the fire guard. This question can probably be summed up in four main points. And the first really key point to a fire guard is it allows for the safe control of the fire at the beginning of the fire, at the point of ignition. If you look at this slide, you can see two different things going on here. In the photo on the left, the igniter is lighting in the fire guard itself that is in the short fuel. This makes the fire small, makes it much easier to control. The head fire is moving, is on the, the right side of that and is moving towards the right. The back fire is on the left side and backing in towards the heavy fuel. This is just an easier fire to control. If you look at the photo on the right, don't look at the stripper who's out in the heavy fuel, but actually look at the flames against the base of that heavy fuel. That's a backfire, and that's a much more substantial fire. The head fire coming off of that would be much harder to control as you initially get your fire started. So one of the things that you can do to use a fire guard is actually start your fire in the fire guard as opposed to starting it in the heavy fuel or against that heavy fuel. Even on the best burn day with the best preparation and the best crew, embers happen and embers will pick up land generally fairly close to the fire um, that makes the fire guard really critical the wider your fire guard is the more space you've purchased for yourself giving yourself time to catch those embers and put them out so a wide fire guard just for embers is a great plan fire guards buy time mistakes happen things go wrong hoses snap whatever the wider that fire guard is the more time you have to correct a problem and get it under control during this next set of slides, you're going to see a fire guard do its job as a crew is conducting a prescribed burn on a small plot. A wind shift was scheduled for later this day, um, but it has shown up about two hours early. The igniter in this picture should be setting a head fire racing into the back fire. As you can tell, the wind, if you look at the smoke, it's kind of going straight up at this point, but the wind has been pushing more from left to right in this slide, which means the igniter is now basically racing in this actual shot he's jogging he'll eventually start running before this the slides run out just a few seconds later the igniter has made it all the way over to the far crew if you look at the fire he set it should be blowing the wind is blowing regionally left to right but if you look at the fire it's actually being sucked back into the updraft from the fire to the left so we're actually closing this fire it's actually worked out really well for us this is a trick you can pull sometimes it's a dangerous trick i don't recommend doing it but as you look at these next series of slides, you'll see the fire closing in on itself. As the main fire dies down at the top of the screen, you can see where the regional winds start picking up and start moving again from left to right. And you can see it pushing that fire across the fire guard into the heavy fuel on the right. Both crews had to stay out of position as that fire closed in the event that it just rolled right on through. This fire guard is certainly doing its job and buying us time. And there probably are a lot of mistakes that could easily be pointed out on just this one day's burn. What I want you to see is, had that fire guard been smaller, we really would have been in trouble. In this next slide, you can see this blacked area, the burned area. The red fire truck in the background is actually on the fire guard. So we contained it to a pretty small area. Had this been a smaller fire guard from the start, this fire probably would have been uncontrollable and would have required us to drop back to a, a, a holding position and start fighting a fire further downwind. 
under the best conditions, a fire guard's actually going to stop a fire as it approaches. And in the picture you see here, had a backfire creep from right to left, it would hit the gravel road and stop even if there was fuel on the other side. So it might stop a fire, but I wouldn't count on it. There are two good rules of thumb to follow when burning off of a fire guard, and the first is never let the flames reach more than half the width of the fire guard. This may mean you have to do a lot of small strips to get that black really established. In this case, the stripper's taking way too big of a bite, and if you look at the flames coming off of it, that's a solid flame easily halfway across the fire guard. That flame is superheating the fuel on the far side. It's spitting out embers that don't have a chance really to cool off. They're landing in that fuel on the far side. And if you look at where the crew members are standing, those crew members very shortly in about two steps are not going to have a spot to actually function and work as a crew in the fire guard. So we're preventing our crew from actually being able to, to work, let alone let the fire guard do what it needs to do. The second rule of thumb is that the flame should never reach more than half the distance of the black. So ignore what the stripper's doing, but look down at the, the fire. That is a backing fire. The flames are reaching about halfway into the black, which is a good distance for those flames to be. This makes stripping somewhat infuriating because if you look at, at where that stripper is, he literally would ha be having to put down about a four to six inch strip. That means he should be four to six inches in to the left of that small fire. And even then he'd be leaving a pretty big flame. So initially when you get going, your first initial strips will seem fairly small and, and be somewhat frustrating. But they're much, much safer. If you do what he's doing, he's getting a bigger black area. But there's a good chance that that fire is going to jump into, into the uh, fuel on the far side. So let's get into the construction of a fire guard itself. Fire guards generally as a rule should be two to three times wider than the grass is tall. There's no hard and fast rule on this. Um, the wider the better. A minimum is at least twice, three times. Ideally it should be at least two and a half pickup trucks wide. This allows emergency vehicles or work crews to pass each other easily. Three pickup trucks wide um, is much, much more desirable. If it has to be smaller than this, then it should be smaller for a reason. You're coming through a culvert. You're coming to a, um, up against a building or some other structure where you simply can't get around that rule. But that's a really good rule to stick with. In this next series of slides, I want to give you an idea of what some fire guards look like. In this current picture, the blue fire truck is actually sitting on the main road. There's a fire guard cut to the side everyone's standing on. On the other side of that road was a fire guard the same width. So here we've really made a very large fire guard and it allows us to function quite easily. Here's a bean field that was dissed under before winter. It's uh, been pressed down by the snow. This actually is not a good fire guard. That stubble under the right conditions can take off and burn very nicely. So if you're burning off of agricultural land, make sure that ground has been double disked before you get into it. Here's a fairly heavily grazed fire guard. Um, this is going up a hill. This next slide is, is again another one of our fire guards. It has a, a road through the middle, a fire guard mode on each side. It makes it a very solid anchor point. Here's a great fire guard. It has a gravel road down the middle, mode on both sides. The, the grass is already greened up, so it's a, it's a very solid fire guard. One of the dangers in this particular one, it has heavy fuel, trees, woodies on both sides. That isn't really a problem here in the tall grass prairie, but it certainly might be where you're at. And if you're going to be burning in an area like this, then maybe you want to cut those out and give yourself a larger buffer than uh, what's seen in this shot. Green fire guards can be outstanding fire guards. Um, they're generally made by mowing late in the fall, raking all that fuel off, and then letting them green up early. So they'll green up quite nicely while the fuel next to them stays brown. So they make very functional fire guards. On the inset, you can actually see the burn crew at the top of the hill. I turned and walked downhill from this spot and turned around the corner in the larger picture. You can see I turned to the left and this is what I found. These small fires are typical of a, a green fire guard. You get a little bit of flame creeping into there. It puts off very little smoke, very hard to see. The picture on the right, the arrow is actually pointing at fire. It's putting off smoke, but certainly from the hill you aren't going to be able to see it. Fire guards like this actually need more patrolling than you might originally think. And so it's sort of one of those lookout situations. If you have a green fire guard, you really need to make sure you have someone coming back on an ATV or in a uh, roving unit just to check on them. Roads can make excellent fire breaks. Keep in mind, in most states, you are liable for putting smoke across that road and causing accidents. People will drive straight into fog, straight into that smoke, can't see through it. They'll still hit it at 60 miles an hour. That is still your responsibility. So 
be wary of using roads as actual fire breaks. They tend to slow traffic down. People kind of rubberneck it. But they actually make great fire breaks. Another great way to make fire guards is just to disc the soil under. If you're um, in an area where you aren't going to get much erosion, this actually may really appeal to you, particularly if you have the equipment to do it. This would make a, a very, very safe, very substantial fire guard. This particular fire guard in this picture is way too skinny, particularly given the grass vegetation on each side. Given the, the force load, this fire guard is, is not effective at all. To improve this, though, all I would do is mow maybe two paths on each side about the width of a pickup on each side of that, that dirt trail, and you have an excellent fire guard that's anchored by um, the dirt. In this video, this is particularly given the, the fuel load, this is a great width for a fire guard. It's probably overkill. But the problem with this one, it's only been disked maybe once or twice, so we still have a lot of grass incorporated in those clumps. When fire gets into those clumps, it'll burn for a very, very long time, and your crew will have to come back over and over again to snuff these clumps out. It's a very, very time-consuming process. You can use other objects as fire breaks. Um, the picture in the upper left, just using a lake to stop it. There's some geographic features that'll stop it. On the other two pictures, the, the gravel actually acts as a great fire break. I would, again, widen that out with a mower, rake that grass off, and um, you'd have a great fire break. So let's talk about some bad fire guards. In these pictures, the grass has been cut, but it's been left on the ground. And grass cut left on the ground is hay, and hay burns. Hay bales caught on fire are a nightmare. They just are really, really hard to put out. If you cut your grass and leave it piled up on the ground as mulch, Rest assured it will burn. You can dump tons and tons of water on it and have basically no effect. So cut and rake. There's, there's no room for just cutting and leaving it or shredding it and leaving it on the ground. Here the grass had been cut and raked, but it was cut during the growing season. Yeah, it's shorter than the heavy fuel you can see on the upper right, but you're going to be fighting this fire guard the whole time. Here the fire guard is great, short, grass has been raked, but it's way too narrow. This happens to be probably one of my favorite fire guards. It's literally a footpath between the brush pile that's on fire and the brush pile that's on the other side. There's about a mile and a half of fine heavy fuels on the far side of this. This is just a bad plan all the way around. Here's what that same fire guard looks like just a few seconds later. The cameraman's actually had to back up, and you can now see that there's a truck parked right next to the fire. This is one of the other problems you're going to have with fire guards and really people in their trucks. The more they like their truck, the closer they want it to the fire. In this picture, you can see a truck that's actually parked in the fuel. If you show up late or you have to come out in your own vehicle, once that fire gets started, move your vehicles into the black. This driver has done something intelligent, and that is leave their keys in the ignition and the doors unlocked. That allows a crew to move a vehicle if it needs to be moved later on. If you can't park in the black, park near the black. The, the Jeep is unlikely to catch on fire. The other two vehicles are likely to be severely burned if that fuel catches on fire. Sunken roads offer a false sense of security. We have bare dirt, a great road, looks like a great fire guard. But the fire guard needs to be two and a half times as wide as the fuel is tall. Well, we should count the height of the fuel, not only the height from the dirt to the top of the ditch, which is about six feet, top of that rise, but then an additional three feet of fuel. So we have a nine foot tall fuel source, and our fire guard is roughly 12 feet wide, something like that. So this is a pretty dangerous situation and, and offers really a false sense of security having that, that dirt there. Not only can you control the fire guard itself, you can control the fuel that's next to the fire guard. In this case, this is a brush pile right up against the edge of the fire guard. That tree line marks the fire guard. We set the top of this tree on fire, dropping embers into the neighboring uh, field. In this picture, this is a cedar tree right next to the edge of the fire line also. The wind's blowing in the right direction, everything's okay, but that is sitting on a lot of radiant heat and is drying out a lot of the fuel around that area and could lead to problems, particularly if there's a wind shift. Here's a, a cedar tree outside the fire guard, and again, that fire is heating up that tree and drying it out. It increases the chances that this is going to be a come, become a problem for you. So here's a great green, very short grass, raked, nice fire guard. It's perfect, except that it's way too small. The top picture is probably more of what the uh, burn boss was envisioning. The bottom picture is just what happens when you burn. Well, okay, in this last uh, clip, you get to see three strippers burning within the mode section of the uh, fire guard.
I'll be posting more videos like this as opposed to slideshows to sort of help complement uh, this FireGuard talk as well as uh, add more videos just on prescribed burning in general. So look for those on YouTube. This is hopefully going to be the first of many. Thank you very much.